it is not possible to begin our didactic path without mentioning the figure of Ilya Alexandrovich Musin, my teacher, a teacher for almost 70 years at the Nikolai Rimsky Korsakov Academic Music in St. Petersburg. Ilya Alexandrovich, as we call him, began his musical training as a pianist, but following an arm injury, he turned to conduct. In this new capacity, he trained at the school of Nikolai Andreevich Malko, of which later he became an assistant. Malko, in 1929, while on tour in Europe, having been informed that the Soviet authorities would no longer issue him a visa to travel abroad, decided not to return to Leningrad again. In a short time, Musin would replace him, holding the chair until 1999, the year of his death. About 70 years of teaching, I don't think anyone else can boast such a record. One day, while I was taking Musin home, I asked him how the lessons were carried out in Malko's class. At that time, Musin told me, there were no accompanying pianists in the class. In the 1920s, it was the students themselves who alternated at the piano. In practice, the student conducted and then the teacher and the course colleagues expressed their opinion on the attempt of the classmate. Anecdotes were told about other conductors and about concerts aired at the Philharmonic or opera staged at the Mariinsky Theatre. So, according to Musin, with Malko, there was no analysis aimed at developing and consolidating the student's technique and communication. In a short time, Musin's lesson took a different path than that traced by Malko. He introduced the permanent presence of two accompanying pianists to the class, people dedicated to playing the symphonic transcriptions. For those who do not know it, the use of the piano duo is the most popular tool for a first approach to conducting. Indeed, I want to add one thing. Sometimes it is more difficult to conduct two pianists than an orchestra, because the pianists always have their eyes on you and do not forgive you for anything. The orchestra, on the other hand, if it wants to, can ignore the conductor and move on alone. So, we do not have the same cause and effort relationship that we find in instrumental technique. That is, a certain sound corresponds to an input, as in the piano or any other instrument. But this relationship can be consciously or unconsciously distorted by the goodwill of the players. The new position of teacher obviously prompted Musin to reflect at length on the most elementary questions of the subject. The same questions that are often addressed to me by the students who decide to attend my courses. For example, explain how to give an attack, how to highlight the various nuances of accents, how to deal with the gesture for staccato and the one for legato, how to construct a passage following a logical thread up to its climax, how to pass from one tempo to another, slow, fast and contrary, 
how to hold the baton so that this banal piece of wood continues to retain the expressiveness of the free hand. To answer the students' questions, he passionately devoted himself to examining the problems that Malko had left unsolved. The purely technical aspect connected to communication and the transmission of an interpretative thought. He demonstrated the convenience of using certain gestures rather than others through the verification of the sound which resulted from his students conducting, who were therefore urged to strictly control their motor skills. Of all of this, nothing filtered out to the waste because of the iron curtain. In short, the concept of technique changes. No longer the four simple notions that Antonino Votto imparted to his students during the first lesson of the year, in the same years at the Milan Academy of Music, but an understanding of technique as interaction, actions that elicit reactions, The love and passion for this discipline never left Musin. You have to think that, although he had long since passed the age of 90, in the evening, when he returned home after the end of the lessons, he would go to his typewriter to take notes on interesting moments that occurred during the lesson. Norman Lebrecht a famous English critic and author of popular essays on conducting and conductors, recently pointed to him as the best of all teachers, a great recognition that came posthumously only a few weeks ago. It is not easy to talk about orchestral conducting, and moreover, it is not easy to reveal the essence of this method. Yuri Merkanov, in an interview that can be found on YouTube, somehow manages to do so by mentioning the most famous orchestral conducting schools of Western Europe, which, it is true, gives students a strong basic preparation, but a common characteristic of their schools is the loquacity. They analyze the score, they discuss its formal harmonical compositional analysis, they do not explain how to drive the car. Musin, continues Temerkanov, he created a method to give students the opportunity to express their thoughts by speaking with their hands. On the quality of ideas, this is a topic that concerns the students more than the teachers. In a typical course, we usually have a teacher who tries to impart his interpretation of the piece. But in our case, the interpretation is personal, but Musin gives you the means to express your thoughts. For this reason, Musin students are completely different personalities, sometimes even antithetical to each other, even if a common thread binds them.